Bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome to week five of Rolling Round Europe in, in Rolly. Rolly. Well, Rolling Round France in Rolly. Yeah, still uh, following the sun in south of France. Um, we started the week um, headed towards Perpignan, um, where the weather was supposed to be nice and warm, and it was. We got up to um, mid 20s uh, down in Perpignan, um, but then the Mistral hit. So to those who haven't heard of the Mistral, the Mistral is a wind that is quite a strong wind that blows through the south of France, um, or certain parts of the south of France. Um, and it hit and was blown up to around 50, sometimes 65, 80 kilometres in gusts. So we decided to move northeast up into the um, Beaucaire, uh, Tascon. Um, Arles region, um, so we're around that region at the moment. Um, another beautiful sunny day. We've just had a nice lunch and a cheeky carafe of red wine over at the Brasserie du Canal, and we're alongside the Canal uh, de Rhone uh, et City, so the Rhone to City Canal. Um, we camped in our campsite across the river, across the Rhone there, right beside. Lovely night there. It was very, very hard to find water, so we had to go into a paid campsite. A real to get campsite, water. so that was a bit yeah. of a novelty, yeah. having to pay for a campsite, but um, had Wi Fi and nice hot showers, and use the motorhome shower, so that was a bit of a bonus. And we got fresh water. So, enjoy the week, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hello, quite a cute little lighthouse and little garden area there, little artworks and pieces and things in there. We're in a place called Lucat in between Narbonne and Perpignan. Um, it's an area called the Grand Cape and over in the distance there you can see a paraponta just lifting above. There's a Bit of a nice breeze going and just along here there's a Michelin star restaurant which was a bit of a surprise. We're up on top of a bit of a limestone cliff looking out to sea and in the distance there you can see clear coming along the pathway and if we pan back around there you'll be able to see Rolly. A bit of a surprise, yeah, we walked along here and then we found a Michelin star restaurant. Um, <coughs> unfortunately not dressed to attend there today, but maybe another day. Um, not exactly sure what's going on with this um, lighthouse, but <coughs> there's a boat parked outside on, and we're on top of a cliff, so I'm not quite sure how the boat got here, but... I just parapond here. He was hanging there for a while and now he's doing a few bit of acrobatics. Pretty cool. And if we pan over here, this is the Michelin La Grande Cup Michelin Star restaurant in an old radar, I think. <laughs> Little secluded beach down here. This is where the paraponters are jumping off. There's a guy preparing. Don't fancy um, climbing down there or even getting too close to the drop off actually. <laughs> we 
just over the back of that restaurant we were looking at and there's all these what look like walls ruins everywhere a little bit hard to work out what they're from a bit of a random set but there's uh, four paraponders up there now we're having fun yeah there's um Well, a little bit random really these ruins I don't know what they would be maybe animal pens what do you think Claire what do you think they are what what <laughs> what we well, think these the are the stone walls I reckon they are fences with little cubby holes built into them animal for pens the yeah I think they might be animal they're a bit too not organised enough for human habitation. They're just like of that type of stone that's Very rugged looking stone, isn't it? Very holy. Very holy. Okay, found a little bit more of a structured building here. We've actually got a cave down here. I might we'll get the trail out in a minute and do a bit of an archaeological dig. Better watch out. Time team is starting right here. These uh, might find some Roman pottery under here. Jeez, I don't think I'll climb under there though. She's a bit caved in. Don't know what it was for. Still struggling to work out. Maybe it's from the war. Maybe it's not that old. Let's go further on my uh, archaeological dig. Here's something a little bit more substantial. Looks like a big doorway in here. Here's another set of stairs. I reckon this might be a bunker from World War II or something like that. Hope there's no Germans down here. I thought I'd get a shot down the beach from up on top here. You can see our campsite for the night just down the distance there. You see the um, tower there just to the right of it. There's some vans. That's where we're staying right on the beach so it should be a good one. The weather's doing its part and nice and warm now. It's about 18 to 20 degrees something like that. Okay, making the most of a windy day. We're out for a walk. Um, we're staying at a campsite. Well, it's not a campsite, it's a vineyard um, with a um, chateau which has um, been renovated. So we'll go and check that out shortly. We thought we'd come for a walk down to the lagoon which is nearby. Luckily, we're protected somewhat by these. But yeah, she's a windy old day, it reminds us of Wellington, so we've decided to keep the camper hidden in some trees um, out of the wind today and not try and drive. Um, forecasters talking about getting up to possibly 80 kilometer hour winds, which is not fun to drive in, so we will just hunker down and make the most of what we've got. It's still a nice warm day, it's about 18 degrees. What do you think about? Oh. It's a bit windy. <laughs> it's a bit windy, eh? Oh dear. It's, it's 
Look at how we go backwards actually, she'll walk backwards. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Mind you at home. <laughs> Good old Wellington, blow the cobwebs away. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Chateau DIY where a couple have bought a bit of a doer upper. Chateau is from the mid 1800s. It was doing pretty well apparently until World War II when after World War II times were quite difficult and they were unable to pay their taxes and for some reason that meant the roof was taken down and maybe to be sold wasn't too sure of the full story but the guy who's running the vineyard here so this is Chateau de Luc Chateau by the lake um, and the guy who's uh, running the vineyard is, I think, a like, fifth-generation chateau um, vin winemaker, and he is part-time trying to renovate this. But uh, yeah, I think she might be a little bit past that. She is in a bad state of repair. Without a roof, the weather's obviously just got into everything. What do you think, Lee? Should we buy it? She's a big job. Take a bit of work. Yeah. <laughs> and probably several tens of millions of dollars in yeah. <laughs> repairs, I would say. Okay, the lunch break is just about finished. We're about to kick off again. We're at a place called Villa Brage, maybe? Something like that? Villa Brage. Villa Brage, Villa Brage. And in, um, we've found ourselves a nice spot in the sun. Prime position, seat final. We're in a place um, near. Um, Arles. 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 Just north of. Beaucaire. It's near there, Montpellier, but not a bit further north. Sort of. All right, lunch break is now over and the game has started. All right, just to give you a bit more of a feel for how big it is here today. Bonjour and good morning from Tarascon, Tarascon, which is across the river from Beaucaire. This is um, where we stayed last night at the motor camp, which is just not the castle. Not the castle. The now motor camps. We've actually stayed in a proper motor camp, which is just there camping Tartarin. Um, oh, it's on the bank banks of the Rhone. Go and have a look across the bridge. Le Chateau. Euros each. We just walked across the river to Bokir. And we're just going to head along the canal here. Um, there's a famous Kamag bull. They're into their bulls in this area. 
lots of restaurants along the waterfront here. So this is the canal that goes across to Set, joins the Rhone just through to the left there. So this is the turning area, and then it heads out that way and goes all the way across to Set. Italian Bistro. little canal area 